But no. You can hit. Yeah, you can do that. Show me what you got. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'll do this for everyone. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah, Eric, go ahead, take it away. So I think the discussion started um, with uh, an idea that has been kind of floating around in the in the oh yeah in the bit swap uh, repo for a little bit. Part of a conversation between Jeremy and Stephen about how to make bit swap. Uh, more efficient, and the idea is that we know a lot about the DAG as we're fetching uh, content from peers. We know historically which peers have given us which parts of the DAG that we're currently fetching, among other things, and we can use that information to predict more intelligently which peers are likely to have the content we currently want. With, for instance, if we had already gotten a, a sibling of the current node, um, from a peer, then that peer is a decent candidate for giving us the, the block we currently want. Um, and you can imagine other things like that, other relationships in the DAG that might make a peer likely to have a block that we're looking for. So um, it's, I think that that started, uh, uh, there was sort of a general acceptance that, okay, let's see where we can build in that kind of smarts. And there was a notion that it would be a service consumed by BitSwap. Um, that would be like BitSwap says, hey, I want, I just got this block from this peer. Do whatever you want with it, cache that information. You know, you have your, build up your own intelligence about the, or build up your own conclusions. And then get me a list of peers ordered potentially that might be good for this block. So a simple API. Um, I think Stephen actually had a more ambitious refactor in mind also. He, he sort of questioned or was there was a, an open discussion about whether that is appropriate, whether this is a service that should be consumed by BitSwap, or whether it should actually be a driver of BitSwap. Actually have smarts and just relay to BitSwap what BitSwap should be doing, who BitSwap should be fetching a set of blocks from, what which peers. And uh, that's sort of what a session is, in a sense, although it's not factored that way. But a session is, is in essence, a way of telling BitSwap which peers are good um, for fetching any given block. So I think if we scroll down a little bit, we see, um, does it actually scroll down even further? And I can do, you know. Um, Steven diagrammed, uh, a uh, sort of uh, future world where um, it, that involves other transports, I don't know if transport's the right word, but other things that are parallels of bit swap in essence like graph sync, some, a different protocol spoken for exchanging data between peers and how we actually might want to factor the code so that there was uh, proper coordination and, uh, and an ability to make intelligent decisions about how to use various transports for getting data. Um, and um, right now, basically, uh, BitSwap is probably responsible for too much. Um, when we have graph sync, we are actually probably going to want uh, orchestrating something that can make intelligent routing decisions between uh, should I fetch this from peers in BitSwap or should I fetch this from peers using GraphSync? One, what protocols do they speak? Two, how, how, how quality are the peers? Three, well, they're not numbered this way. Three, what have we already gotten from these peers? So there's lots of um, potentially pretty complicated ways in which we could rank peers and suggest that some were better than others for fetching data from. So, um, this is actually pretty different from the way it looks currently. I'm not going to go into too much detail, I think. Maybe some of you who are more familiar with the code than I am recognize how different it is from the way things currently work. Scroll on too. Yeah, uh, this was, I, we can talk briefly about the thing that's just a, actually just above it, which was um, this had already been thought of before. And there was actually like Divi sort of uh, showed what uh, something that had been considered in the past, which was more of a fall through behavior where graph sync was the, was the superior transport device. And that's, I'm, I'm naming it a little bit. It's not quite a transport device, but whatever. You, uh, graph sync was like a better way of getting data from other peers. Um, 
failing graph sync, you would fall through to the block service. I'm sorry, you would, yeah, you'd fail through, you'd fall through to the block service, which only knows about blocks. It would potentially ask bit swap for data, and it would be the thing that also understood about the repo and knew like how to add files to uh, add blocks to the repo and get blocks out of the repo. So I guess the one thing, um, Kuba immediately was like, okay, one thing I don't like about this is you can't make smart routing decisions or, or really smart routing decisions between graph sync and bit swap. Like you can't have them running at the same time for a set of blocks, you can't divide things up, or you can't, for instance, if you're on a local network with really awesome bit swap peers, but you have some graph sync peers that are whatever, far away, high latency, you might want to actually prioritize those bit swap peers and talk to them first instead of using graph, graph sync to get data. So that, I mean, that is true. If, if this is really technically a fall through pattern, then that is true. And so this other, the other architecture, definitely um, architecture. The other way of laying out our responsibilities definitely gives us an opportunity to, to make sort of higher level decisions about how we want to do stuff and which peers get which. Um, it also, yeah, the, in the details things, will, it'll be interesting to see how this exactly uh, falls out. It is interesting where the block store lives in this um, picture here, which I think is good, but it's really sep it's very much separated from um, from the actual transfer of data between peers. Now, can it actually be that super separated? It's not. It's a little hard to know exactly how we're going to plumb some of that stuff in because uh, in a discussion this morning with Kubu, he sort of pointed out, well, there's bit swap fetching, and then there's also bit swap serving. Bit swap serving obviously needs to respond. Needs well, they all they both need somehow to get data in and out of the block store. Potentially, just knowing whether you have blocks already as you try to fetch blocks, and uh, although that could be a, the job of the block service, but in another case when you're serving them up, um, we don't know exactly the relationship between those things. But maybe more, also like we don't want to build all of this before we do the thing that we were setting out to do in the very first place, which was make for smarter bit swap and make better decisions in bit swap. So I guess the I, the idea is first to break up bit swap a little bit the way it is right now to sort of the things I, I think you can think of this sort of as like this is the thing that knows about sessions and how to how to route across peers bit swap requests and this is just the thing that does the requests basically um, and we would introduce basically this part on top of on top of bit swap which you know these things are basically the same um, and we would introduce Okay, not quite. We would introduce the DAG exchange. This and this are basically the same, and we would introduce the smarts about, the structural smarts about which peers have given us what in the DAG, and we would use that. And we may also have, I mean, that is actually sort of a session in a sense, but it's like information like a session would be about making decisions about what peers to communicate with this one. All in the, and that's the first thing we would do, um, would, presumably without doing all the refactoring and probably still having block store like BitSwap a little bit more closely tied to the box for that is right now. That's it. So now was the discussion. All right. Thank you. Cool. Do people have questions about this?